Hello friends and thanks for tuning into this video about the JVC KY-PC100 camera. This is a very nice quality camera. It is a great match if you're using other JVC cameras in your studio. And you know what? Skyhawk actually makes the official RCP for JVC cameras such as the HC900 series studio camera and also the, I think it's HC500 or GY500, anyway, the 500 series, which is also a 4K camera. Now, check that out. We, uh, we do control a lot of JVC stuff and also the PVC camera here. It has two modes. It has the uh, web UI and also the VISCA mode. We are showing it in the VISCA mode today, so it falls into the line of PVC cameras we control that has VISCA capabilities. And speaking about that, our controllers are universal, so today we're looking at a PTC Fly. We also have PTC Pro, which is a bigger brother to this one, and then we have the PTC Extreme, which is the super awesome, huge console for PTC camera control. The difference is not what they can do, it is how easy it will be to access functionality because you'll pick your Skaho controller based on your size needs. And PDC Fly is a very compact PDC controller, yet it has a lot of detailed control. We have six buttons and four encoder knobs with displays that will show you exactly what each function is about, which, uh, or, which each, uh, or what each hardware component is currently controlling. So, if you had a PTC Pro and PTC Extreme, and I think you should check them out on our website, you'll see that there's just more buttons and it means you have more direct control to stuff. Now, one of the examples of that would be if you look at this controller, how it's laid out, it's really simple with a camera selector on the buttons here and a multifunctional shift key over here. It is shift key, it is a paging key, it is a menu access key. And you see when I press on the lower edge of this button, I am toggling into a mode where I can recall presets on a camera. So on the other controllers, you'll see that as direct control. You have a camera selector, you have a preset selector, you can go directly to the stuff you need. But it's not always what you want. Sometimes you want a simple controller for users who you don't want to push away by a lot of complexity. And that's what Skahoy is doing in this world. We are giving you those options to make the perfect user experience for your uh, broadcast um, uh, controllers, you know, the operators, which sometimes are volunteers in your church or in your university and you need simple solutions too. This is where we're helping you out. Now, uh, let's go to this camera and look at what else it does. We have also uh, SDI out, we have HDMI out, we have a camera powered by PoE, single cable solution. We like that, like Skyhoy controllers, single cable solutions there. We also have a um, little slot for a micro SD card, so you can actually record on this camera. And it has a USB plug, where you can plug in a Wi-Fi antenna if you want to uh, stream wirelessly. And the power is wirelessly, of course, as well. Not true. So probably you still need at least two cables when you are doing that. So it works well in uh, low light and it also has uh, live streaming right out of the camera. But now let's look at what the camera can do. And I um, got us into this preset menu. So let's just check out how the presets work. You can see the camera is pointed to a little selection of Skahoy controllers over here. And yes, we are going to do something about the white balance and the exposure and so on. It looks a little bit awful right now, but let's just check out the presets here. So I think I was already on preset number one, but now I'm checking out preset number two and you see, uh, this is regular preset record. If you are new to PDC cameras, that's one of the main takeaways with a PDC camera. That is, you can you can store uh, combinations of pan, tilt, and zoom of the camera and recall it later. Very, very, very useful in so many circumstances. And you have direct access to recalling that on your Skahoy controller like that. And you know what? You can actually even add a new uh, recorded preset. So let's say we use the joystick. Another very important feature of a PDC controller, that is the uh, joystick. The tactile experience of controlling a camera with a mechanical joystick this is really important and probably why you're watching this video as well. You know that you just can't do that in a piece of software or web UI and so on. So here you can see I'm just zooming into these uh, controllers over here and uh, now I'm doing it a little quicker. So I'm just increasing the zoom. You see this is there are different steps you can do and I can adjust the pan and the tilt here off the camera a little bit like that. Okay, now that was, um, no, I want it slightly different, a little bit up here again. You know what, I can just, no, I'll do that later, speed control. But 
I now have something that I want to record as a preset. So I press and hold the button, it turns green. This is now recorded on preset number five. I can recall preset number one. And if I press button number five right now, I recall preset number five. Actually, we do have more banks of presets. So if you press the sides of this button, you see, hey, that's fancy. You can actually do different things depending on the side of the button you press. You can toggle into uh, between the bank one to five of presets or six to 10, or you can even go into a special menu called cruise control. And now we are at it. Let's take a look at what cruise control is. Now, this is just like your car. If you want to start your, put your car in motion on a, on a road, you press cruise control and it just keeps going without you touching the speeder. So it's the same thing here. We basically, let's make a pan across the controllers, right? Okay, this is a little bit too quick for me. So I'm just gonna go into the menu. So, okay, a little sidetrack thing here. I wanna adjust the speed of my pan tilt zoom, which I can do on this knob. So when I'm now moving the joystick, it goes a little bit slower. Now I press this button. It is cruise control for five seconds. Hands off and stop. There you go. So why do I want that? Because if you had multiple cameras, now I have only one, but if I had multiple cameras here on the camera selector, camera number two, if I started the motion of camera number one and use cruise control to keep it going for say five, seven, 10 seconds, whatever, or even you could combine it with a, let's say a foot pedal. You could have that to sustain the movement until you release it. That's what the flag option was for, by the way. And oh, so the point is I want that camera to keep going and then I want to go into my camera selector, so select camera number two, adjust that, record a preset, frame my subject. I will switch on my video switch and then I want the first camera to stop moving. It gives you more options for dynamic shots, dynamic live productions, but still with only a single operator. So that's a very exciting feature. Check out PDC Trace as well. It's related. There you can record, um, uh, you can record your movement basically with the camera and replay it again. So those are features Skyhoy has added into our controllers. This is not a camera feature. It's a Skyhoy controller feature that will help you to add more value to your PDC cameras. And that's typically available for all of them. So the JVC as well as uh, the other brands we support and so on. Okay, so we looked at presets, we looked at uh, cruise control here, and I think it's now ready to look a little bit at the menu. And by the way, at the end, we'll also look at how we can integrate this with your vision mixing system. An ATEM switch in this case, that's at the end of the video. This menu is the exposure menu, and you can currently see it's in auto exposure mode. By the way, if we changed anything in this camera through a web interface, it would reflect on the controller. We are in two-way communication with the camera. So this state is pulled out of the camera. It is currently in auto mode because it says so in the display. When I change it now to shutter mode, to Irish mode, you can see I have direct access to shutter and Irish priority modes. In manual mode, I can do everything. And this is where we want to dial a little bit down on the very, very light image we have right here. So you can see gain is at 15 dB. We can turn that down to a more natural, uh, maybe let's try out zero dB. Um, maybe it's too little, I don't know. But uh, the main point here is that you show, you see the effect of adjusting these things. So shutter speed, Irish control as well on this knob. So this is uh, how we can paint the camera. This is actually possible to map over on the RCP. So uh, this is going back to my original introduction of Skyhoy working with JVC on controlling their camera range. And there's a number of cameras typically used in a studio setting. If you add in this PTC camera, you could map the Skyhoy RCP to also control that one. You have a seamless experience of Skyhoy RCPs working with your JVC cameras, including the PTCs. And that's a great thing. But if we move on beyond exposure, we can see the next menu has white balance. So there we have full auto white balance selected currently, auto white balance, we have um, fixed modes like uh, 3200 Kelvin for indoor and here we have outdoor mode and now finally uh, manual mode which is um, red and blue gain which we now control on these buttons over here. 
and you can lock them if you press you see it's not moving or you can open it up like this and I'm now painting the image to something which is really not pretty but uh, we'll quickly go back to full auto white balance once again we move on we see detail in here you can uh, turn detail off or on select different levels we have noise reduction low high and off we have tally on off we'll get back to that in a moment but tally yep you can look at it here on the front if I move the camera over so you can see it you see this little LED on the front here is currently red because it's on I can turn it off you see it's off on the image and finally we have uh, the on-screen menu of the camera so here you see uh, I'm able to access the on-screen menu and in combination with the joystick I can navigate this menu go into the pan tilt zoom menu I can move down here I can go into a setting I can change this setting on and off and I can go all the way back again if I want so this is how the on-screen menu is also available if I move on then we have focus mode here I can turn that into manual I can also adjust the focus uh, and there we have speed limit for focus if I move on then we had the speed limit for the pan tilt zoom we already saw that one and then we have some um, features related to the panel like you can turn on and off or uh, increase the brightness of buttons and displays or you can decrease it you can probably see that on the, the uh, shot of the controller here you can set the uh, IP address stuff like that is available as well now that was all the features of uh, how this was configured there might be a few more available as actions and let's turn our eyes out uh, over to the configuration of the Skyhoy controller with this camera because I have two things that I want to show you how Skyhoy controllers are so valuable in that you can integrate them with other hardware. In this case today, this is connected to an ATEM switcher. So let's assume that a Blackmagic ATEM switcher is our mixing system for this uh, production. And um, if you look at the, first of all, it's connected by USB. So with USB, you have a way for your computer to easily find the controller and bring up a configuration interface. I did that by pressing local configuration. I'm on the same network as the controller and it brings up a website like this one. So you see, this is the graphical representation of the Skyhoy controller, the PTC Fly, and now I can press buttons like the uh, camera select button which I currently did and it is shown what actions are associated with this button so um, I, I think I just want to remove something which is a bit confusing easily for us right now what we see here is the the normal state where we have the camera selector and it um, it is what selects camera number one it seems pretty natural doesn't it and then uh, we also have an action called system color which is adding this mint green color to the button so uh, in fact if i remove this color it's going to turn out white um, so see i save you see on the controller that is now going to turn white or <laughs> Actually, it's not. I, I know why. I know why. You know why? I'll show you why. Because uh, the section, the whole section of buttons is colored pink by default. So if I go to section number one, you can see that there's um, a local color of pink, which is going to color them all pink unless I overwrite that by clicking button number one and adding a system color. So let's just do that once again. System, uh, we can search here, we can find system local color and then let's select a uh, something significant like uh, dark blue. Okay, dark blue, it goes light, uh, dark blue right now. There we go dark blue because what I want to show you is that it's so useful for the PTC operator to know if the camera is currently selected is on program or preview or nothing at all on the video mixer and that's what we are going to do right now because um, what I can do is add another action here which is also in the system section called output transformation and output transformation will allow me to say, I want this button's color to be painted by the next action I'm adding. So the next action I'm now adding, adding is from the Blackmagic ATEM selection of actions. I'll, I'll select video tally. And then uh, assuming this camera is on uh, input number one on the ATEM switcher, I'll select that. Then and say, this is a program and preview. Okay, let's just see what's happening, okay? I save, look at the button color and it turns red. Probably because input number one on that ATEM switcher is unprogrammed. And I can go to the ATEM software control, which I have right here. You see that is in fact true. Camera number one is unprogrammed. What happens if I press cut? Ah, it turns green. Because, and if by the way, I select something different for preview, it turns blue. 
So there you go. You have an integration where we are pulling data from the vision mixing system. We are controlling a camera. We have the camera selector lighting up in colors that will tell the operator whether his camera is dangerously on program or if it is totally safe to move it around. I want to use this feature for something else. Using a virtual trigger to combine the tally information from the ATEM switcher with the little tally light on front of the camera. That can be done by the Skyhawk controller as well. So now we are becoming a protocol converter, okay? And this happens in the kind of same style. I'm going to the bottom of my configuration interface. Here we have virtual triggers. I'm adding a trigger. I'm adding a source. And the source for this one is the ATEM. Uh, let's find it here. The uh, video tally, okay? So <clears throat> what happened there? Video tally. I want, um, again, source number one. And uh, I have only program on the LED. So it's red or nothing, okay? So currently what we are doing is we, we are saying when the ATEM switches input number one is on program, we want this to trigger something and we just make it active here and then we add an action. The action is that on the JVC camera, sorry, on the JVC camera, huh, um, in the system menu, we have various options. One of them is that for camera number one, we can choose tally and we can use the function called hold down. So hold down means that for as long as the input tri trigger is active, that means the input number one is on program, we are going to light up the tally lamp on the camera. But as soon as this change uh, state is changing away from input number one being on program, we are releasing it again on the camera. So what I just did right now is gonna establish that link from the ATEM switcher to the camera totally automatically without me pressing any buttons and save. So now the unfortunate thing is that I can't really see the LED so easily, uh, except that, um, let's just see, okay. So we select camera number one on program. Oh, and the little LED should light up red right there because the virtual trigger actually uh, saw that this happened on the ATEM switcher. So let's just press cut and did it go off? Yes, I think it went off again. So there you go, you have seen Skyhawk PDC Fly, one of our most affordable PDC controllers at all, working with the JVC KY PC100 camera, integrating with an ATEM switch, giving you feedback on the camera selects and even doing tally protocol conversion. Could it be any better than that?